I wish to share with you a brief word from that prophet called Jeremiah, chapter 8, verse 22. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is no healing for the wounds of my people? From this passage, I want to use the question that Jeremiah asked. Is there no bomb in Gilead? During my early years as a teenager, I used to watch Western movies. These were movies that would catch my attention and hold my attention as a young lad who came in the house at times to just sit down and see what was on television. Western movies caught my imagination and kept me intrigued by the various themes and the plots found therein. I was particularly drawn to Rifle Man, and part of the reason I was drawn to Rifle Man was because of the action of using his rifle to shoot people. Uh, not that I'm a proponent of violence or guns for that matter, but it was just something about the action of the movie that kept me glued in. Recently, since I've been sequestered at home and in the midst of dealing with many other things, occasionally I turn on a Western, particularly Rifleman. And I realize that one of the reasons why I like Rifleman so much is not just the action of the movie, not just because usually the good man or the good boy, whoever wins out in the end, but I'm also watching it because I'm intrigued by the questions I have. One of them is, how can one man with a rifle facing four or five other men with guns shoot them down and come out victorious? Now, I'm not as naive as I was as a kid, but it still challenges me to think about how movie persons who make movies are able to create this kind of dynamic so that we who watch them can be intrigued by the dynamics of one person taking care of five or six others. This pandemic poses more questions than it offers answers. How it is that an invisible yet deadly virus can bring powerful nations to halt? How can such a virus travel from a relatively small town in China, travel the streets of that town, get on the railways and on the airplanes and travel the entire globe. How can something so invisible and untouchable devour the lives of the young, the old, the rich, the poor, and the cities and countrysides? How can a virus dumbfound the brilliant and accomplished minds of our scientists and physicians? In addition, I'm puzzled that this nation has made it a standard behavior to incentivize those who are rich, the powerful, to make sure that their needs are taken care of while the poor are left to beg and do the best that we can to survive. Just recently, the Congress, along with the President, passed legislation that has given millions of dollars, trillions of dollars rather, to all kinds of people across this nation, only because a virus has caught our attention. Indeed, how can a virus cause medical insurance companies and healthcare institutions to now do all they can to make sure that every need is taken care of and every situation is handled as best as we can? The prophet Jeremiah suggests to me that it's time, in times like these, we ought to indeed ask questions and plead with ourselves and God during this period of time. Speaking from a deep place of pain, Jeremiah's grief, despair, disappointment cries out in this question, the harvest is past, the summer has ended, and we're not saved. And he goes on to say, is there no bomb in Gilead? What he witnessed caused the prophet great agony uncontrollable weeping, inexpressible grief. Things were bad and so bad until he was left with this question, 
Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the help of the daughter of my people not recovered? As we continue to navigate our way through this pandemic, we join Jeremiah with the same lingering question. When we see the number of infected persons rising ex exponentially, coupled with death tolls in, in, in many places, and seeing them sometimes doubling in one day, we have to ask the question, where is our bomb? Where is our sign, our healing, our cure? It was the French philosopher Voltaire who wrote once, those who ask questions come up with the most innovative and successful ideas. In reading other magazines, particularly Forbes, I realized that questions speak curiosity or raise curiosity. Questions cause us to create ideas, and good ideas lead to innovation. This virus is posing more questions than it's giving us answers. Where then is our bomb in this season? Long before the coming of this pandemic, there existed another virus. It has been responsible for creating more discord, disharmony, disconnection, disorganization than this pandemic. It has tumbled great men and women. It has severed the ties of families. It has disrupted the path of the most holy and the unrighteous. Yes, there is this virus, but there is an older virus that is generations old that has suckled the globe over and over again. It has inhabited every home, every community, every city, every nation, and every government. This virus deceives, betrays, binds every life. It is the seed of racism, sexism, greed, and malice. This virus puffs up, us up and makes some people feel like that because they sit and on top of the world as president or in the White House, they can look down on other folk and believe that all they do is right and everybody else does wrong. This virus belittles up others in order to pump up one's self. While medical science, government agencies, and powers that be are tasked with finding some way to prevent, treat, and cure this virus, they have no remedy for the virus called sin. The sin virus is at the heart of Jeremiah's question, is there no bomb in Gilead? As we continue our season of social distancing, frequent washing of our hands, and staying at home as much as possible, and praying for a quick ending of this virus, the question posed by Jeremiah yet rings in our ears, is there no bomb in Gilead? Well, I said earlier, questions can lead us to great purposes. Questions can cause us to be creative and cause us with great to do great innovations. It was it were questions that eventually led Moses to answer God's call to lead the children of Israel out of Egypt. It was questions that led George Washington Carver to look at a peanut and ask the question, what secrets do you hold? It was Martin Luther King asking the question, how long to this nation that has led us to this progress? John F. Kennedy, remember, asked the question, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. When our ancestors were struggling with the ills of slavery and all that goes with it, they pondered also their own sinful conditions and they asked the question of Jeremiah, is there no bomb in Gilead? And their answer was, there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin-sick soul. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my work's in vain. But then the Holy Spirit buys my soul again. When wrestling with the hole and stain of the virus called sin, our forefathers hold another question. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole? They said nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. 
No other found I know nothing but the blood of Jesus. Well, brothers and sisters, as I come to a close, the tree that Jeremiah had imagined that would hold balm for Gilead and Gilead was a tree that was in a foreign land. Its medicine was not in its roots, nor in its bark, nor in its leaves. Instead, its medicine was inside the tree. But in order to release the medicine from the tree, the tree had to be cut, bruised, wounded to allow a thick liquid to flow. On what the church calls Palm Sunday, I found Jesus the Christ rode into, into Jerusalem on a humble donkey. A few days later, he was arrested, falsely accused and tried, whipped, and on Friday, an old rugged cross was put on his shoulder. He was led out to Golgotha where he was bruised, wounded for our transgressions, chastised, crucified, and yes, died on that cross. Indeed, because he died as our bomb, we can sing, there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a bomb in Gilead that will heal the sin-sick soul. Well, in 1988, there was an estimated 350,000 cases of polio worldwide. Two vaccines were created, and in 2012, there were only 223 cases left in the world. Someone asked the question, what made the difference in those numbers from 350,000 to 223? The answer came back, the people had to take the medicine.